There we go. There we go. Boom, boom. There we go. Nice fish. Eh, two pounds, a little more than two. No, I got him on a black and blue worm. All right, buddy. See you later. Don't splash me too much. There you go. So what you got there? There you go. Nice chunk. bass. Big old chunk. What you got it on? Oh, the little river frog? I oh, know. Yeah. That's what is it? Something new. Some kind of little bile crawl. Nice. There we go. Peace out, buddy. Had to get him from untangled from all the grass. Jesus. About to fall in the water. So, my philosophy on bass fishing, opposed to any other kind of fishing, is if you learn how to catch bass, you will, it will make you better at any other kind of fishing there is. The guy that y'all just seen in the video, that's Mike. And Mike has been fishing. Oh man, that's a big swell right there. Something big took off. Mike used to fish tournaments. He's been all over the country because of his job. And uh, he caught two before I even got here, but he caught one about two and another one about two and a half. And that one's about three. So we're getting a little bit better. And uh, he's fished all over. So, I mean, he has a good bit of knowledge and I'm all about learning things. So, so I'm out here just dragging this blue worm and every once in a while, just kind of hop it along. Just kind of got rocks around here, any indentation in the bank, got a little point of that grass where this bait's kind of coming from right now. They got rocks in the water. Might throw a crankbait at that later. I had a swipe at a crankbait this morning, but uh, it's pretty stagnant as far as the wind goes. High bluebird skies, water's kind of dirty from rain yesterday. So sometimes that works in your favor, you know, just kind of just dragging it along, hopping it along and seeing what happens. I seen he sends me pictures all the time and me and him ended up meeting because of YouTube. Like I meet a lot of people. Me and him has been trying to plan a trip for a while, but due to his work schedule and my work schedule, just never came to fruition. So now we out here together today. I caught one, he's caught three. He caught two, I wasn't even out here. Hopefully we can get some Mondos on here today. The other thing is too, is like, you know, when you're fishing with new people, try to learn, you know, some of their techniques or something like that, you know, it's just, I always try to learn things cause I just want to be the best fisherman I can be, especially with bass, you know, especially somebody who's much older than you and can give you the tools to learn things. You know, it's, that's just kind of one of those things. You know, that's how you learn, that's how you get better. He fishes with different baits than I do. Like that bait he was fishing with, I've never even seen that bait. And he was telling me it's like kind of more of a trailer than anything else, but he's done caught three nice fish on it and I'm on one. So just goes to show you, don't be afraid to try things. God, dog. Shit. Well, that's not a bad thing. No, crankbait. Crankbait? Yep. Well, <laughs> I hope I got us some pliers. Like he choked it pretty good. <laughs> oh, shit. I got some pliers over here in the back. Yeah. Man, this is. <laughs> I love this like, reel now. The only thing I don't like about crankbait here is you get you lose them. Lose them on. Yep, and it's it's it gets very expensive very quickly. Yeah, I know that's that's where the fish are, but still, I lost a couple last spring or this spring. Yeah, I'm I'm going to Yeah, I'm going to losing a six dollar bait on a freaking stump. Yep. You know, in a boat ain't too bad, you can go get it, but here you can't. So I like that Texas rig, you know. Yeah, you lose that, I mean it's not that. You can't get it, it's just a hook and a weight. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> there we go. So Mike just broke off on about a three pounder, he said. So they biting today, just kind of kind of worked for them a little bit, but it's always a good day when you go fishing. There we go. Good thing I got him when I freaking did it because he popped right off, a little bitty one. All right, little guy. There we go. 
Nice one. Nice one. I'll tell you what, when they on the crankbait, they eat that damn thing. Let me borrow them pliers again. Well, they eating it. <laughs> I think that's what they want. I mean, he freaking just choked the dang thing. I don't even know if I have a damn pliers in my thing. I might. Yeah, I just picked it up again. I was just trying to fish soft plastics, but. There we go. Yeah, me too. Yep, about a little two and a half pounder. Nice fish. On the brand new reel, giving a good test run. You gotta love it when this is the average. Oh yeah. Later. So what's up everybody? I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe, drop a comment, drop a like. Tell me what y'all wanna see in the comment section. Check the description for anything I forget to put in the video. And uh, sorry, my dog's over here hollering like a freak, so. <clears throat> But I met my friend Mike off of YouTube, and uh, he's a pretty damn good bass fisherman. He's been all around the country bass fishing, so, you know, he, he has a good bit of knowledge. So, he was sit we were sitting over there, he was fishing with uh, some kind of trailer bait. I don't even know what kind it was. It was a little craw crawfish pattern, and uh, he did pretty good. He broke off on a three-pounder, caught a couple uh, two-and-a-halves and everything like that. But what it was is they had a little bit of wind on the water that kind of pushed the bait fish into a certain little pocket that he caught a few fish on. And then on the back side of the canal where all the rocks were, they had bait fish over there. So what he was telling me is that the bass kind of sit on the outside and when one of them little bait fish swims off, that bass busses it. He could eat it, but he's trying to keep those bait against the bank because he might not be feeding at that time, but a little while later it might eat. He's just trying to get like a buffet more than just one little bitty minnow. That's what I picked up from him. And uh, I kind of just, I threw the plastic. I caught one off of a stump on a plastic. But I really wasn't getting too much on wood. So I was like, you know what? Most of the bites we had were within the rocks. And every bite we got, they had a little patch of minnows that was real close to the bank. So those bass were kind of sitting off just a little bit. And then I started throwing the KVD crankbait. Because that's something that you want to use all the time. When you're banging off of rocks, a crankbait is really, 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 really hard to beat. Around wood, it's good too. It's just, once you become more uh, advanced with fishing a crankbait, you'll be able to detect if it's a bite or not. And then, if you don't think it's a bite, then just kind of pull it and use that bow and arrow technique so you don't lose all your baits. That's just a little tip for y'all. Yeah, once it starts getting cold like this, they're either going to be deep or they're going to be up shallow near them rocks. Them rocks hold heat. So that's why I use that crankbait around that time. But uh, it's almost sock late time. It pretty much is right now. But whenever I get time to go, I'll go out and go make a video. Till then, I'm going to see y'all on the next one. Say bye. Say bye, puppy dog. Say bye. Later.